Good morning and welcome to our online service on this, the third Sunday of Lent. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. I hope you are well and keeping safe. I hope for all of you that your Lenten journey so far has been a fulfilling and enriching one. We start our service today with a worship song as usual. Uh, Sophie will be singing, Who is there like you? Who is there like you? Thank you very much, Sophie. Who is there like you? The answer to that is quite obvious. No one. There is no one like God. No one like our awesome, majestic and glorious God. Now it's time for us to have our opening prayer. Now for us to call on our awesome, glorious and majestic God to come into our midst and take over this service. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are glorious, awesome, majestic. There is no God like you. There is no one like you. We all welcome you amongst us this morning, O Lord God. Fill us, Heavenly Father, with your Holy Spirit. Draw us closer to you, O Lord God. Accept our offering of thanks and praise which we offer to you this morning. Pray through us, O Lord God. Speak through us, O Lord God. Sing through us, O Lord God. Preach through us, Heavenly Father. 
in all that we do, O Lord God. Let your name, your glorious, majestic, and awesome name be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now it's time for our readings. And Mark Alden will be reading two readings. The first one is 1 Corinthians 1, chapter, verses 18 to 25. And the second one is John chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. And in between the two readings, the St. Martin's voices will sing an anthem, the Lent prose. The first reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since, in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. O Christ. Thank you, Mark, for all those readings. May the words of my mouth, O Lord, be spirit and life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. When we read about Jesus Christ in the Gospel accounts, we discover a consistent theme, and that is one of confrontation between Jesus Christ and the Jewish leaders, the different religious leaders and religious groups, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and all the leadership of the Jewish people, of the Jewish nation of Jesus Christ's day. There was, there seemed to be consistent conflict between Jesus Christ on the one hand and these other groups on the other. And a lot of this conflict stemmed from Jesus Christ teaching and Jesus Christ views that these religious authorities, these groups, though they were consistent in their religious observance, nevertheless they were far from God in the way they practiced the faith. These were people who, for all intents and purposes, were pious Jews. They were religious people. Yet, they seemed far away from God. And so, Jesus was always bringing up those inconsistencies. Jesus called them hypocrites a lot of the time to show that you guys say one thing, but you do another. You say one thing, but you, you, you say you want to draw to clo close to God, but in your outlook, in your output, in the way you observe your faith, you are no closer to God. And that was what was at the, at the heart of this conflict. And in today's reading from John's Gospel, we see and we encounter this confrontation. We see Jesus Christ cleansing the temple. Now, the temple was the nerve center of Judaism. The temple was a place where people went to encounter God. It was a place where people went to draw closer to God. It was a place where there were lots of, lots of um, offerings and sacrifices because people felt, or the, the, the Jewish uh, faith said, you could go to, go to the temple in Jerusalem and observe and practice your faith and draw closer to God there. Lots of different, um, different practices. So people would go offer sin offerings there to, to, to reach, to, to pray to God in order to be absolved of their sins. And that meant sometimes offering sacrifices with animals and the like. And yet, Jesus Christ comes to the temple and he cleanses the temple. And I like that word, cleanses. 
What that means is Jesus Christ felt that there was a stain on the temple. The temple was not clean. And so Jesus Christ cleanses the temple. What can we attribute that cleansing, that stain on the, on the, on the temple to? We look at it and it's because we find Jesus Christ saying that he, the people were, they turned the temple into a, a marketplace. There were money changers there. There were people buying animals there. They were selling animals, things like that. So it had become a marketplace. And by so doing, it had become far removed from the object of what the temple should have been, a place of prayer, a place of encounter with God. And so Jesus Christ cleanses the temple. He drives them away. We're told that he drove them all out of the temple. And these are all the money changers sitting there. Drove them out of the temple using a, a whip of cords. And he drove out the sheep and the oxen and all the animals that were being sold there. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. That was quite, that's, you can just imagine that's quite a scene, a scene that was created him overturning and driving these people out of the temple. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my, house, my father's house a house of trade. And that's important. It's God's house. But the people had turned it in to something different. Something where it was difficult to even see or come closer to God. So the, the, the people were practicing their faith, coming to the temple, but the spirit of the faith was no longer visible. They had obscured God. They had the, they had obscured the view of God by all these, the, these practices. And that's something that we can find today in our church. And when I say the church, in the church, we find people who come to church. And for, for a lot of people, it's not about what we do, about encounter. It's about traditions. It's about uh, 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 what kind of style of service. It's about different things. It's about maybe their pews or no pews. It's about all kinds of things. And we lose sight of God as we place a lot of emphasis on those things. The temple. And the church is more than just a building. And Jesus Christ tells us that he has become the temple. The Christian faith is, in more, is, in, is more than just that building. The Christian faith is about relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about how we relate to God. If we focus on the temple, if we focus on the building, the physical building, then we'll lose sight of God. If all we're concerned is, or all our efforts are agitated towards whatever it is, those physical practices. And a lot of times they're good, they're good reasons why we have them. But ultimately, if that's all we focus on, we lose sight of the God beyond those practices. As a priest, I encounter lots of people who come and tell me, you should do this in church, you should do that in those. If you don't do this, I won't come to church. And I'm always aggrieved. I'm always hurt by that. Not personally, I'm hurt because I'm saying to myself, you've lost sight of God. It's not about those things. It's about who God is. It's about what God has done. It's about what Jesus Christ is doing. And as we journey through Lent, I want us to remember this. As we journey through Lent, I want us to reconnect I want us to draw closer to God. I want us to ask ourselves, what is the object of my faith and my devotion? Is the object of my faith God? Is the object of my faith Jesus Christ? Or is it this building? It's interesting, for the last year, we've been out of our buildings. We have been separated from that physical structure, that's physical space by doing online services. And I think in a lot of ways, I see the hand of God in this because this is God telling us more than important, more again, to the people of God, telling us to, again, look, it's not about that physical space. It's about who I am. It's about me. It's about me and you and how us being in relationship. And that's important for us 
to note, to realize, and to treasure. God is enhoused in a building of stone. God is housed in our hearts. God wants to draw closer to us. And Lent tells us about this sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us. Jesus Christ died for us. Jesus Christ was raised from the dead for us. Jesus Christ did all this out of love for us. And that's what we should remember. God loves us and he gave his life for us. And that is a life transforming truth. Amen. I now hand over to Alan West, who will be leading us in our intercessions this morning. Heavenly Father, as we come to you in this time of prayer, we ask that we feel your presence and be led by your guiding spirit. As we come together to lift the things on our hearts to you, draw close to us so that we can draw close to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we give you thanks for the Church, this worldwide body of believers, a huge mix of people brought together through faith in you. We thank you for the privilege of being able to pray and for each other, regardless of whether we are together or apart. We bring before you, Lord, our brothers and sisters 
around the world who are facing persecution because of their faith in you. We think of those who may be far away in countries we only know about through watching, reading and listening to the news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for all those you have called into leadership. Those in our churches, governments, school, healthcare and so many other places. We ask that they respond and be guided by your spirit. We pray that you will grant them health, strength, wisdom, rest, support and all the things they need to lead with love and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of forgiveness, we pray for all those who are struggling with the repercussions of their decisions, words and actions, who may feel that there is no hope. Draw them close to you. Give them courage to respond to your love, mercy and forgiveness. Lord, we also pray for all those who may be struggling to, to forgive others or even themselves. Forgiveness is something that, we can, that can be so very hard. Yet when you help us truly to forgive, it gives a freedom and peace that only come from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth and righteousness, help us to see the false gods of our age. Show us the things that are getting in the way of our relationship with you and with others. Show us how to overturn our tables and strip away those things so that we may once again return our hearts fully to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, we lift to you the schools and places of education as they prepare for a full return of students from tomorrow. Lord, there are so many different feelings attached to this change. Anxiety, excitement, anger, apprehension, and so many other things. Help everybody, Lord, to be mindful of the thoughts and feelings of others as we navigate through these next few weeks. Be with the staff, the students and families alike. Reach out your hand and lead the way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of comfort, in a moment of silence, we bring before you those you have placed on our hearts and those who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
God of our journey, as we walk with you on your path of obedience, sustain us on your way and lead us to your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this. All of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Uh, Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death, and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy holy, 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 Holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. 
Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
Thank you to the St. Martin's Voices for that hymn, Just As I Am. That is one of my favourite hymns, so that's just a great bonus for me this morning. Uh, now for our announcements. Uh, the first announcement is a very important one, uh, and that's to say that we will reopen the church next Sunday, the 14th of March. We will reopen the church for public worship next Sunday. And that means that we will have services in church at 8 a.m. and 10.30 like we used to. We will continue to observe and adhere to all the um, social distancing and all the COVID-19 guidelines. So it's still the same. It will, it will reopen in the same way that we were operating before this closure. So it's two services, one 8 a.m. and the second one at 10.30, social distancing. We will, uh, we will ask you if you want to, to book a seat as we did and we'll send out all the details as usual. So do please look out for all the details for that. But from next Sunday, the 14th of March, um, we will reopen for public worship. And we've taken this decision, this decision because we've looked at the situation. Uh, the children, school children are going back. The rate of infl infection has gone down. The number of hospitalizations has gone down and the number of deaths gladly has gone down also. So we are in a better place. And also the government has opened up a roadmap towards fully reopening back from all the closures and lockdown that we've experienced over these past few weeks and months. So we feel confident that we can reopen in a safe way like, we've, like we did before observing all and adhering to all the social distancing and all the COVID-19 guidelines. So do please look out for that. I think it's important that we should be able to worship again in church. So from next Sunday, Sunday, March the 14th, we will be back in church 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. 10.30 a.m., sorry. And that's just for Holy Communion services, both services. The first one will be BCP and the second one will be Common Worship but both of them will be Holy Communion. Uh, and we will send out details uh, to all of you uh, shortly. So you should be able to get that before long, all the details of those services uh, back in church. And I'm looking forward to that. And I'm sure a lot of you are also looking forward to going back and meeting in church again. Uh, even when we reopen, we will continue this online provision. So we will continue to have our online provisions for the foreseeable future. We will have uh, morning and evening prayer on Wednesdays, <clears throat> 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Do please join us. Again, we send our links for those two things. Uh, we will also have our catch-up on Sundays at 12 noon. If you're able to join us, do please join us. Um, that's it for this week. Uh, just a couple of, just a few more thank yous before we go. This has been... Um, a great service as always. Um, thank you to Sophie. Thank you to Mark. Thank you to the St. Martin's Voices. Thank you to Paul for playing the organ. Thank you to Alan West. And above all, thank you to the tech team. Uh, last Sunday was our 50th um, online service. And next week will be the 52nd. It means we'd have been doing this for over uh, about a year. And that's been a really, really awesome undertaking. And I can't thank everybody who's contributed to this enough. This has been something that we didn't, we weren't doing before as a church, but we've kind of just embraced it and we haven't skipped a bit. Beat. We've continued as soon as we in the, during the first long when the church was closed, we started the Sunday after that and we've continued nonstop. And I, I, it's, it's an awesome achievement and I really want us all to be proud of what we've achieved, um, especially, and say thank you to the tech team guys. Thank you to Simon West, thank you to Alan West, thank you to Laurie, and thank you to everybody behind the scenes who help in putting this together. It, it, we can't do it. It's not a one-man show. It's not a one-woman show. It's a group of people contributing together, working together to make this possible. And I think we owe everybody a debt of gratitude for being able to do this. So thank you to each and every one of you. Now it's time for our blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, 
Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. See you all next week and have a wonderful week and stay safe. Bye.